a story to tell you. A story of a girl called Wendy Moira Angela Darling. Wendy, as she was called for short, lived in London. Each night she went to sleep in her nursery with her brothers John and Michael. Then one night, the strangest thing happened. As Wendy was sleeping, a misty, shadowy figure slipped in through the open window. It was a boy, dressed all in leaves sewn together most carefully. And while Wendy slept, the boy flew round her room. He was obviously looking for something, underneath the beds, in the cupboards, in the drawers. And at last he found what he was looking for, his shadow, which he had lost the night before while he was listening to Wendy's mother telling a bedtime story. Peter was trying to stick it on with soap when Wendy woke up and asked him, quite politely, Boy, what are you crying for? Because I cannot get my shadow to stay on. So without further ado, Wendy fetched a needle and cotton and sewed it on for Peter, hurting him as little as she could help. As they sat chatting on the floor, Wendy asked, Where do you come from? From Never Never Land. It's a place where there are fairies. Oh, goodness, I quite forgot. One came with me. Her name is Tinkerbell. Ah, I can hear her. She must have got shut in that drawer. And as they freed poor Tinkerbell, Peter said, There are mermaids and there are... Peter was going to say pirates, but he decided not, as he had an idea girls were easily frightened. There are also redskins and wild animals. Ooh, and the lost boys. Who are they? They are boys who fall out of their prams. The fairies bring them to Never Never Land, and I am their captain. Suddenly, Peter had an idea. Why don't you come to Never Never Land? You could be our mother and tell us stories. Oh, how lovely. Of course I will. The angel voice that bids you Never Never Land. You fly! But I can't fly. I'll teach you. Wendy was so excited at the idea of learning to fly that she woke up her brothers. All you have to do is think wonderful thoughts. Wriggle your shoulders and let go. Think of the present you're brought. Any merry little thought. Think of Christmas, think of snow. Think of sleigh bells, here we go like reindeer in the sky. You can fly, you can fly, you can fly Think of the happiest things That's the way to get your wings Now you own a candy store Look, you're rising off the floor Don't wonder how or why You can fly, you can fly, you can fly Wendy and the boys tried, but nothing happened until Peter said, Bother! I forgot. I have to sprinkle you with fairy dust. And as soon as he had done it, the little darlings were off, soaring round the room and over the beds. It took the little darlings rather longer than they expected to get to Never Never Land, because Peter took them a roundabout way. But finally, one evening, as the sun was setting, Peter said, The second star to the right shines in the night for you to tell you that the dreams you plan really can come true the second star to the right shines with a light that's rare and if it's 
Neverland you need, its light will lead you there. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, so I know where you are, gleaming in the skies above. Lead me to the one who loves me. Life in Never Never Land usually quietened down while Peter was away, but the Lost Boys were expecting him back, and the island was busy. The Lost Boys were looking for Peter. The Pirates were looking for the Lost Boys. The Redskins were looking for the Pirates. And the Wild Beasts were looking for the Redskins. And they were all following each other round and round the island. While Peter was explaining all this, John said, How many Pirates are there? Never known so many. Who is their captain? Hawk. And the children were at once quiet, for of all the pirates who ever lived, Hook was the most terrible. Is Hook big? Not so big as he was. I cut off his right hand and threw it to a crocodile. He now wears a hook in the place of his hand. And just as Peter said it, there came from below the sound of Hook singing. Oh, a pirate's life is a wonderful life, a roving over the sea. Give me a career as a buccaneer, it's the life of a pirate for me. Oh, the life of a pirate for me. Oh, wonderful, 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 wonderful life for me. The Lost Boys, Wendy discovered, lived in a large, comfortable hole in the ground. They got into it through hollow trees, and it made a safe refuge for them when they were not fighting the pirates. So cunningly was the home concealed that Captain Hook had never found it, until there came one terrible night. The pirates had spotted one of the lost boys, and Hook had sent them off to search for the others. And while he and his rascally bosun Smee waited for them to return, Hook started to tell Smee the story of his life. And most of all, I hate Peter Pan. He cut off my hand and threw it to the crocodile. And the crocodile liked the taste of it so much, it's been following me ever since, hoping to get the rest of me. I always noticed you was afraid of crocodiles. Not all crocodiles, just that one. But I'll tell you, Smee, that crocodile swallowed a clock and the clock goes tick, tick, tick inside it. And I can hear it coming along so I have time to get away. Ha ha! Never smile at a crocodile. No, you can't get friendly with a crocodile. Don't be taken in by his welcome grin. He's imagining how well you'd fit inside his skin. Never smile at a crocodile. Never tip your hat and stop to talk a while. Never run, walk away, say good night, not good day. Clear the aisle and never smile at Mr. Crocodile. You may very well be well bred, lots of etiquette in your head. But there's always some special case, time or place, to forget etiquette. Never smile at a crocodile. No, you can't get friendly with a crocodile. Don't be taken in by his welcome grin. He's imagining how well you'd fit inside his skin. Never smile at a crocodile. Never tip your hat and stop to talk a while. Don't be rude, never mock. Throw a kiss, not a rock. Clear the aisle and never smile at Mr. croc o -dial. Suddenly, Hook leapt up with a fearsome yell. Ah! This mushroom is hot! Mushrooms don't get hot, Captain. Shut up, you fool, this one is! Hook pulled and tugged at the mushroom, when suddenly the top of it came off. Look, Smee, smoke! 
Smoke, Captain? Yes, you fool, smoke! And in a flash, Hook realized what he had found. It's a chimney! We've found it at last! This is the chimney to the Lost Boys' home! Hook searched busily around him and soon found the hollow trees that led underground. Down below, he could hear Wendy talking. Do come with us, Peter. You'll have a real mother, too. What Peter said in reply was never heard, for at that moment, a fearsome noise broke out above them. We'll soon know if the Redskins have won because they always beat a Tom Tom. Now Hook, who had heard all this, at once ordered a Tom Tom to be beaten. But the Redskins had not won. Many of them had been killed, and the rest had crept away. And the pirates were waiting to capture the lost boys. The Redskins have won! Now we can go. Do come with us, Peter. Please. But Peter refused. He said goodbye to each of the boys as they climbed up through the hollow trees, then went to his bed to sleep, quite unaware that above him the boys and Wendy were being seized by the rascally pirates. Hook was furious when he found he had not got Peter after all. He climbed quietly down the biggest of the hollow trees, and when he couldn't get any further, reached out his arm and poured poison into the medicine that Wendy had made Peter promise to take. Then he crept silently away. Peter was awakened by the sound of Tinkerbell knocking at the door of the Lost Boys' home and saying that Wendy and the boys had all been captured by the pirates. I'll go at once and rescue them. Come on, Tink. Oh, I'd better take my medicine first. Tink shrieked a warning. It's been poisoned. Hook put poison in it while you were asleep. But Peter ignored her and started to drink. Quickly, Tinkerbell slipped between his lips and the glass and swallowed all the medicine. Then, fainting and pale, she fluttered over to her bed. Peter was terribly upset. He didn't know what to do. Then faintly, he heard Tinkerbell whisper, If all the children in the world say they believe in fairies, I might get better. Peter stood up and called out, If you believe in fairies, clap your hands. Hurry or Tink will die. There was a sound of clapping far away. And suddenly, Tink got well. And Peter went to rescue Wendy. It's Hook or me this time. One or the other has got to be killed. On the pirate ship, Hook had decided to amuse himself by making the lost boys walk the plank. He bound Wendy to the mast to make her watch. Then, just as the first lost boy was about to go to his death, there came a tick, tick, tick. Hook fell in a heap on the deck. The crew gathered round him to protect him from the crocodile, and the lost boys rushed to the side to see the crocodile come aboard. But it wasn't the crocodile at all. It was Peter, ticking as loudly as he could. He signed to the boys not to cry out and to look scared as if the crocodile was really coming. Then he climbed aboard and cut Wendy free. Aren't I clever? The crocodile's clock ran down, so I made the ticking instead. Just then, a pirate came up from the cabin below. Peter struck with his dagger and crowed. <coughs> then one by one, Hook ordered the pirates into the cabin to see what was crowing. And one by one, the lost boys counted them off until Wendy said, Only Hook is left. <coughs> Peter's got him. Hook was only slightly hurt, but he caught sight of his own blood and it was such a hideous colour and it scared him so much that he jumped overboard. Peter's won! And look! The crocodile was waiting for Hook! <laughs> so that was the end of Captain Hook. Peter wanted the lost boys to stay, but Wendy said no. And in the end, even Michael and John decided to go home. And although Peter was sorry to see them all go, he finally agreed. Well... All right, but I'll come and fetch you each year for a week to do my spring cleaning. Will you come, Wendy? Of course I'll come. And when you bring him my way, each time we say goodnight, we'll thank
like the little star that shines.